In statistics, a moving average, rolling average or running average is a calculation to analyze data points by creating series of averages of different subsets of the full data set. It is also called a moving mean MM, or rolling mean and is a type of finite impulse response filter. Variations include, simple, and cumulative, or weighted forms, described below. Given a series of numbers and a fixed subset size, the first element of the moving average is obtained by taking the average of the initial fixed subset of the number series. Then the subset is modified by shifting forward. That is, excluding the first number of the series and including the next number following the original subset in the series. This creates a new subset of numbers, which is averaged. This process is repeated over the entire data series. The plot line connecting all the fixed averages is a moving average. A moving average is a set of numbers, each of which is the average of the corresponding subset of a larger set of datum points. A moving average may also use unequal weights for each datum value in the subset to emphasize particular values in the subset. A moving average is commonly used with time series data to smooth out short-term fluctuations and highlight longer-term trends or cycles. The threshold between short-term and long-term depends on the application, and the parameters of the moving average will be set accordingly. For example, it is often used in technical analysis of financial data, like stock prices, returns or trading volumes. It is also used in economics to examine gross domestic product, employment or other macroeconomic time series. Mathematically, a moving average is a type of convolution and so it can be viewed as an example of a low-pass filter used in signal processing. When used with non-time series data, a moving average filters higher frequency components without any specific connection to time, although typically some kind of ordering is implied. Viewed simplistically it can be regarded as smoothing the data. In this video I'm going to answer the question what are moving averages? A moving average is a line on a chart that represents the average of prices over a specific time frame. It changes as the price changes in the time frame it represents. Moving averages are technical tools that traders use to identify trends on charts. A 10-day EMA could show an upswing or a downswing. Uh, the 50-day could show a stock under accumulation. The 100-day could show a key level of a pullback during an uptrend. And the 200-day can mark the boundary between bull markets and bear markets. A simple moving average is just the average of prices in the time frame. An exponential moving average gives more weight to recent prices and changes faster when reacting to new prices. So a simple moving average is just what it is. A 100-day simple moving average is the last 100 days into price added together and divided by 100 gives you a simple moving average. An exponential moving average gives more weight to more recent prices in its formula. So EMAs change quicker to new prices. They are faster while simple moving averages are slower. But any time frame can be an, a simple moving average or an exponential moving average. Moving average can smooth out price action for trading trends. A moving average can be your filter if you're in a short-term uptrend. A 50-day can tell you that. An upswing, a 10-day EMA can tell you that. You know, a 100-day and 200-day can tell you in the time frame of 100 or 200 days, the market is in an uptrend if it's over that line. A moving average crossover systems can further smooth out volatility for holding positions during a trend. A 10-day crossing over a 50-day moving average can be an entry signal and you can hold until the 10-day crosses back under the 50-day. This can be a crossover, could be your entry, and then a cross back under can be your exit. You know, this can create a good risk-reward ratio with asymmetric bets, where if you're wrong and it crosses back under, you have a small loss, but if it trends, you stay long and you can have a big win. Moving averages are for trading trends and are not useful during sideways markets. During a highly volatile or choppy market that's going sideways, it can cut through a shorter term moving average multiple times. So a big part of creating moving average system is to find ways to manage the volatility. And uh, for people that, you know, believe that moving averages are lagging indicators, you know, all indicators exist in the present moment. There is no future indicators because the future does not exist. It's all measuring what something says in the present moment. But a billionaire trader, Paul Tudor Jones, one of the greatest traders of the last uh, 40 years, he said, my metric for everything I look at is a 200-day moving average of closing prices. 
I've seen too many things go to zero. Stocks and commodities, the whole trick in investing is how do I keep from losing everything? If you use the 200-day moving average, then you get out. You play defense and you get out. You know, Enrons and uh, even uh, market crashes, uh, Bear Stearns, the 200-day was the first thing it lost before the downtrend really got going. You know, for something to really begin to crash and go into an extreme downtrend, it has to go on the 200-day moving average first. So this is the line of the sand that Paul Tudor Jones draws between uptrends in bull markets and bear markets. The legendary trader Ed Sakota's early trend-following systems were based on Richard Donchian's four-week rule and five- and 20-day moving averages. Uh, Ed Sakota is one of our the best-performing uh, traders that managed money also over the last 40 years, and he also started his systematic trading when he was using punch cards with computers and and developing mechanical trend trading started with moving averages um, moving averages create the potential for big wins and small losses by capturing trends and exiting with a small loss early during a trend reversal you know you can enter if price bounces at the 100 day moving average and then if it closes under it you can cut your loss and uh, get out with a small loss but if it trends higher you can stay longer and find other ways to exit with a, a bigger win. So moving averages are tools for creating asymmetric risk trades in the market. Moving averages are quantified signals unlike trend lines that can be discretionary and based on opinions. You know, if you draw a trend line on a chart, it can a lot of it is opinion and discretion on where the trend line goes for what time period. I mean, trend lines can identify uptrends and downtrends, but a moving average is a quantified number that you can use specifically for backtesting and trading and uh, it actually gives you a quantified number down to the penny of what a moving average is. It is uh, quantified while trend line can be discretionary and opinion based. Uh, moving averages can be back tested for their viability as profitable signals. If you if you like how it looks for a 10 day, 50 day EMA crossover on a chart, you can actually use software and even web based uh, applications to back test and see what would have happened historically had I entered with 10-day, 50-day crossovers and exited when the 10-day cross back under the 50-day. And you can go see if that captures trends and manages volatility. You can't do that with uh, trend lines and opinions and predictions. Uh, moving averages can be used as entry signals, stop losses, profit targets, trailing stops, and discretionary trading tools. Uh, you know, you can have the thing if the 10-day cross of the 50-day, you enter. Uh, you can say if it crosses back under, you exit. Those are signals you can actually create off of a crossover system. Uh, stop loss, you can say, I'm going to enter when it dips to the 100-day moving average, and if it goes below it, I'm going to stop out. But if it goes above it, I'm going to let it let it run, and then later create a uh, trailing stop loss with a 10-day EMA if it works out. Uh, so they are tools for uh, creating signals on a chart. These are trend trading tools. You know, these aren't opinions. These aren't predictions. These are tools for managing your trades. Even if you use it discretionary and you move it, move your uh, entries and exits around, you know, based on your um, discretionary trading tactics, you know, they're still tools. You can also just have a pure trend following mechanical system using uh, crossover systems or long term moving averages to to just create a completely mecha mechanical system where you simply follow signals and you can backtest to see if they're viable or not. So this is a great tool for quantifying trading, uh, especially for trends. And I've also begun my journey with Forex. Now, why have I decided to uh, choose Forex on top of everything else that I'm already doing? Well, quite frankly, this is a skill set that was not available to us prior to 20 years ago, i.e. the invention of the internet. And, you know, when you learn how to utilize this properly, it is an incredible investment strategy for you, for your family. You can teach your kids how to do this. I mean, it's something I wish I had known about when I was in high school. You know, um, obviously past results are not typical and, and do not guarantee nor dictate your future success. But when you find something that works for other people, you can make it work for you too. And so I'm here today to share with you some of the things that I've been learning along my journey, um, as well as a couple of things that I learned this past weekend at the Forex convention that I was at. Hey, Shane, thank you so much for the love. Appreciate it. So this was one of my favorite things that I learned, um, not this weekend, as if you're watching this live, but the weekend before, the first weekend in March. Um, and it's because basically, um, if you want to go big, there's six ways to do it, and you can all do it on your left hand. So here's, here's, here's how that works. All right. Um, so first of all, first of all, be positive. 
all right? Um, you want to be positive because the more you focus on negative things, the more you're going to attract that into your life. If you're not happy with your job, if you're not happy with your paycheck, you've got to do something different. If you're not happy in your relationship, you've got to do something different, right? Everything in your life is really a reflection of how you react to what's happening in your life and if you are constantly improving yourself, if you are building on your skill sets and the like. So first of all, be positive, right? Um, if you're doubting yourself on how long it's taking you to achieve a goal, think about things like Colonel Sanders from KFC. He was in his 80s, I think, before somebody accepted his um, uh plan of what KFC was going to be, right? Um, we've, you've got people, um, the guy who, who started Ford, right? He didn't even graduate from, I don't even think high school, right? So there's no excuse for you not to create success unless you just stop working on your dreams. So be positive. First of all, use your pointer finger and like point, right? Direction. You've got to have direction. You've got to have vision. You've got to know where you're going, you know, what it's going to take to get there and break it down into actions, actionable steps so that you can actually create that progress that you seek. So be positive. Direction. Having vision. I'm looking at my notes here. So apologize if I'm not um, looking at you right now. And then this one may bother some people. So um, the third one is that one, <laughs> right? Don't care. Don't give a flying flip about what other people tell you, think about you, say to you, because it doesn't matter. You are on your own journey. And whatever somebody else tries to tell you that you can't do something, you're too old, you're too fat, you're too young, you're too female, you're too male, you're too, you're not enough, right? Whatever it is that other people say about you or to you, it doesn't matter. What matters is where you're going, where your vision is, how you see yourself, and where you want to create in your life, what you want to create in your life, okay? Uh, because it doesn't matter what they say, people are going to talk anyway. Whether you're doing great or doing bad, people are going to talk. And most of the time, they're probably not even really thinking about you. It's just, it's just how it works. All right, so one, two, and three. <laughs> Fourth is values. That's why he had it on the uh, ring finger was because that was the marriage finger. I think it was a, a married gentleman who was speaking this. So you've got to have values. Um, you you have to treat people right. You can't you can't treat people badly. First of all, whether it's a job or a business, you cannot treat people badly because first of all, it's a reflection on you and your leadership. And second, nobody wants to be treated that way. If if you let's say you're in a home business, right, and you treat people like the dirt underneath your shoes, they're not going to stay with you long term. If you have a business and you have clients that you don't follow up with, that you you know don't ensure that they're happy with their product or service that they purchase from you, you're likely going to have a very bad client, not bad client, a client who who's not singing your praises and is going to spew probably negative and not so great things about your business on the internet. So you've got to treat people well. You've got to have values. You've got to be a person of dignity. All right. So that's number four. Number five. Um, this is the pinky one, and I, I don't know if you know this, but I don't remember when this got started, um, but there used to be a habit where you would put um, a string around your pinky finger for a reminder. So the fifth one was you've got to have a reminder that days are important. And what does that mean? You have to recognize that your time is limited. You don't know when it's going to be over. You don't know when you're going to die from an aneurysm or get hit by a bus or <laughs> die from old age or whatever. It's, there is so many things in this world that could happen, but you never know when your time is coming, when your time is already here. So it's so important to make sure that you put into every moment that you're awake the time and effort and energy in order to be able to create the life that you dream of. Because if you don't do it, no one else is going to do it for you. And your time is so important. That's why I've done prior videos on this about how to create time management in your life, how to um, cultivate your day so that you can get more done and, and still feel like you have accomplished a whole lot, right? So a um, reminder that days are important. And then finally, he said, put your arm up in the air, right? Because what, you've got to do 100%. And like he had people standing up on, on table, oh, not tables, but people were standing up on chairs, probably should have been. Uh, <laughs> and they were just, you know, he, he like, reach higher, reach higher, reach higher. And his point was, is that you've got to give it 100%. Um, you have got to put in that extra mile if you want to accomplish things. Because here's the thing. I firmly believe that the universe works with you, never for nor against. And so if you are putting in for lack of a better term, half-assed effort, and you are not doing what it takes to get what your, what your dreams call for, then you're not going to get back what you seek. And therefore, the way the brain works, you might think that you 
aren't good enough, that you're not smart enough, that you, of course you could never do whatever it was that you're trying to do. You've got to make it so that you win. You have to position yourself that you will win and you have to put forth 100% effort in order to do that. So that was the lesson from uh, this past Forex convention that I was at, or at least one of them. I will be sharing more um, as I continue to do these videos. But that was the mindset portion of today's video. Now I'm going to be sharing with you some things about moving averages. Let me go ahead and bring up um, my notes here. Okay, let me bring over here. So let's talk about moving averages. So first of all, um, moving averages allow you to do a lot of different things. Um, but bottom line is they're, they're basically, um, let's say you have what's called a simple moving averages. Basically a simple moving average on a Forex trading chart is the average of some part of the Japanese candle. For those of you that don't know it, I have this in my five day boot camp. Just let me know that if you want the boot camp, send me a message, leave a comment down below of boot camp or send five DBC, I think I have it up here, yeah. Send five DBC to my Daily Wealth Ninja for, um, Facebook page and it will give you more information on that as well. But basically, um, when, you, uh, when you're using a moving average, you have to choose whether it's open, closed, or whatever the case may be. And basically it takes however many number of candle candlesticks that you're looking for. You can have four, 20, 200, doesn't matter. And it takes that number of candles, adds them all up, whether it's all closes, all opens, whatever, all highs, all lows. And then it divides by the number of candles. So that's how you get your simple moving average. All right. Now with the simple moving averages, the longer the time period, i.e. the number of candles, the slower the reaction to price movement. Um, and I'll go over that in a little bit about why that's important. But um, if you go to a site called babypips.com, uh, they have a lot more about this on here, but, but they showed a picture where the simple moving averages of 5, 30, and 62 were an overall market sentiment and trend. So you can use moving averages um, to determine trends. You can use them to determine when to get in and out of trades. They are very versatile and they're free. <laughs> um, the problem with simple moving averages, however, is that they're very susceptible to spikes in the data. So let's say that you have a news event on one of your favorite pairs and there's a major you know breakthrough here or maybe it's a major sell and it's just a one-time deal well if it's a one-time deal that's skewing your whole data set because it's again adding them all together and then dividing by the number of, of candles that you have so this could give you an incorrect calculation and therefore an incorrect indication of the market overall trend so what about your extent essential <laughs> <laughs> exponential moving averages. So your exponential moving averages, they give more weight to the most recent period. So um, let's, so, so instead of each one having the same, um, that's not really a great way to explain that. Um, I don't know the exact math behind it. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> but let's just say that you had a five period exponential moving average and it took like the most recent three as the the heaviest weight that means that where that line that exponential moving average line was going to fall would be more towards the average of these three okay again math doesn't matter just know that there are good things good are pros and cons to using exponential as well as simple all right so Exponential moving averages are actually closer to price than the simple moving average because they're more accurate, all right? And I'll show you some of this here in a second. So how do you use them with trading? So if you're looking to respond quickly to price action, maybe you're a scalper, right? Um, then you would choose a shorter period exponential moving average because you are trying to get in, trying to get out, right? Um, these types of moving averages can help you find trends early so that you can get in and therefore collect more pips um, or get out, you know, if, if, the, if the trend is going uh, in the opposite direction now. The problem with this is that you can potentially get faked out during consolidation. So what consolidation is, there's an, hold on, there's a downtrend, there's an uptrend and there's consolidation. So consolidation is when price is moving between some unknown, no, not unknown, but some invisible line of a support and resistance. And it's moving just like this, right? It's moving within that price 
range, and it's moving sideways. That's consolidation. So during consolidation, if you have a shorter um, exp exponential moving average, you might get faked out during consolidation. Now the opposite is true for this for this simple moving averages. Simple moving averages are smoother and they're slower to respond to the price action, and therefore. Um, if you want that, you need a longer simple moving average. They are good for longer time frames. So um, again, if you have a simple moving average for the longer long long haul, <laughs> um, because it does save you from fake outs. The downside of simple moving averages is that the delay could be too long, and then you might miss good entry or even miss the trade altogether. So think about it this way. I love how Baby Pips explains this. Think of the slow moving average as the tortoise, right? It, it's gonna get to the end eventually and it's just kind of get, gonna get slow to get there, but it, it's got a path, it knows where it's going, right? But the hare is the fast EMA. And so it's, it's moving much faster. It might get in and get out, but it's more likely to um, have hesitation and breaks within its race, okay? So to wrap up the pros and cons, so your s simple moving average, which is not weighted, it's a simple moving average. It's a smooth chart. You'll see it move a lot more smoother than you, than you would for the other ones. And it eliminates fake outs. The cons to the simple moving average is that it's slow moving. Um, it's got a lag in buying or selling signals. And so again, if you're looking to get in and get out, this is probably not the one for you. Um, but for overall trend, this would be really good to check out. The ex exponential moving average, pros and cons, Pros, quick moving, right? So you can get in, at, get in, get in and get out. It's got good price swing, um, or it shows rather a good price swing. So you can um, see when those trends are happening. And the cons are that um, it's prone to fake outs and it can, it can give errant signals. So it's really good to use both of these together with your strategies. Now, some people use the longer SMA, so a larger time frame for the simple moving average for overall trend, like I said, and smaller EMA time frame to find good entry and exit. So I wanted to show you this difference because just talking at you probably just what made your brain go, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying to me right now. <laughs> so let me go ahead and share my screen. And we're going to share the screen on, actually, let me make sure I can bring up my comments before I move forward. Hey, Robert, thanks so much for joining. Um, all right, share my screen. Perfect. So right now you're looking at GBP USD, which is the Great British Pound um, United States dollar. You can do this on any time frame, on any pair, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and only use the left screen because that's where I have my fancy indicator that I'm really excited to share with you. So let me back up first. So I said in my description that I wanted to share a, a, a learning lesson with you that I wish I had realized much sooner. So I've been learning how to leverage moving averages and I've been learning from one of the educators uh, uh, who's part of the Forex education company um, that I invested my time into. And um, she has been teaching how to use moving averages to get some really quick pips. And so, um, and obviously, past results are not typical. They don't guarantee or dictate your success. I'm simply telling you what she's been teaching us. Um, so, and what's been happening for her and some of her students. So this right now, um, what I was using before was an indicator called, uh, oh gosh, I don't even, oh no. I was using simple moving averages. It has 4,360 likes. It is amazing. Uh, the reason I like this one is because it turns green when it's it, when it's indic indic indicative of an uptrend and it turns red when it's indicative of a downtrend. And I really like that. And I thought I was using it appropriately with what I was learning from these moving averages. But the problem was, was that well, yes, some of them were simple moving averages. A lot of the ones that I was told to use were exponential moving averages. And this simple moving averages one did not have exponential moving averages. So um, I probably, uh, if you were seeing my, my weekly trades that I started to do um, a couple weeks ago, and I stopped because I just, I didn't feel like it was providing a lot of value um, yet, but um, I might do it again. 
but I, all of, not this past week, but the week before, I had a lot of failing um, trades. And that's okay, right? You, uh, if you're learning a new strategy, you should always do it in demo um, to make sure you understand what's going on. And so while it didn't affect my real money, um, I, I am treating my demo account like, like my real account balance. And so you know, I, I kept thinking, why is it that these trades are not going well? I'm following the steps I'm being told. I'm getting in when it says to. I'm getting out when I think it's supposed to. But they just weren't working. And I finally realized, hmm, probably Thursday, like just a few days ago, that it's because they weren't exponential moving averages. And the reason why is because of what I just told you about what they are. So now, instead of using these simple moving averages, which makes me sad, however, I'm learning how to code it, so I'm gonna make my own. Um, but instead of using the simple moving averages, I'm now using FSEMA. And so that is four simple and exponential moving averages, I believe. Is that right? I think that's right. No, it's not. Hold on. It's this one. Four simple and exponential moving averages. It only has 45 likes. But this thing is awesome. This thing is awesome. So when you come here, and let me actually zoom in for you so you can see this a little bit better. So you can see that I actually have a lot of things enabled right now, um, though most of them are not showing, and here's why. So on the left-hand side where it shows inputs, I have enable second, enable third, enable fourth SMA for, for your simple moving averages, and enable second, third, and fourth EMA. So you always have the first simple and the first exponential showing, or at least available. So that would be this one right here, SMA length one, this one, and EMA length one. So the length is the number of candles that you're using, right? Um, and then if you have these checked right here, but you don't have them checked in style, they won't show up on your, on your um, chart. Okay, so let's go back here and I want you to see the difference. So right now I have it where this blue line right here is my four, is my simple moving average four period. It's got four candles. So each, so each point on that line is the average of the prior four candles close for this one. The purple right here, this is the exponential moving average for, I think it's four. Yeah, for the four. No, hold on. Yes, it's the 20. So the blue is the four, the 20 is, excuse me, the <laughs> The blue line here that's the closest to price action, that's the four simple moving average. The purple line right here is the 20 exponential moving average. The green line is the 50 exponential moving average. And the red line is the 200 exponential moving average. Now, as I said before, each one um, means a little bit different. So I did share that in the, part, in the earlier part of this video. If, you have, if you're watching this live, please be sure to tune in and, and rewatch that. So why is this important? So if we come back and we turn on SMA2 for simple moving average of the 20, so when we add in the 20, we see that the purple and yellow look different, right? Okay, that's because one is the simple and one is the exponential. The exponential is the yellow. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Ann. Thanks for joining. And so when we take away the exponential moving average, which is that yellow one, and actually let me um, zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. Okay. 
So like I said, the, the simple moving average 20 is a yellow. We take it off and we see that it ha it's close to, but not quite what the purple exponential moving average for the 20 looks like. Same with the, with the um, 50, right? I just added the 50 simple moving average. It's not as accurate. It's not as close to your price action. Hey, Joni, thanks for joining. Um, but it does show the same type of trend. But again, as I said earlier, there are some pros and cons to using one versus the other. And then, of course, we have our SMA4, which is the simple moving average for the 200. And it's much, much higher than our 200 exponential moving average. So again, this is why it's so important to understand the differences between your simple and your exponential and why it's so important to use proper tools. Because like I said, I was using all simple moving averages and I for some reason thought I wasn't. And so a lot of my trades, like I had some trades that hit, I don't know, hit stop loss within 0.2 two points, but if I had used different moving averages, it would have been it would have been different and gone in the direction that I had thought. So that's the lesson I wanted to share with you regarding moving averages. Let me uh, make sure that there's nothing else to share with you today. Uh, make sure that I'm respecting your time. So we talked about what is a simple moving average? What is an exponential moving average? Why it's important to use the right tools. <laughs> um, and I shared my, my lesson on that for, for that. Pros and cons of simple moving average and an exponential moving average and um, a little bit of mindset today. So if you liked what you saw, please like this video, share it with someone you think should hear it today. And if you are wanting to know more information, I have a free group. So somewhere above or below this video will be a link to my Facebook page. Um, you should be able to find it on a pinned post, so you can join that at any time. And here's the thing, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And when it comes to learning skill sets, especially things like programming or um, Forex or something that may seem too much for you or too technical, the thing is, is that it's never hard, right? And things that are new are never hard. They're just new. And if you want to avoid pitfalls, if you want to um, find success faster and more accurately, then you really need to have mentorship that can that can guide you and show you where you're going wrong, help steer you away from danger zones, right? And, and help you learn from their lessons and their mistakes. So I am part of an educational um, system. I don't know what to call them, but basically not only do they teach you Forex, they also provide you the tools to be able to find really, really awesome trades so that way you're not always on your on your chart all day. You know, they provide over 60 plus hours of live mentorship every week. You've got a community of other traders to, to lean on. And then, of course, you have me. So it's amazing. And if you want to learn more, please be sure to send me a, a message or leave a comment. Because as I said at the beginning of this video, this is the one skill set I have ever found in my entire life that allows you to create potentially create your dream life, your dream income without having to be a salesperson. And it's something that you can teach your children so that they can learn how to, you know, basically use their phone as an ATM. And obviously I can't guarantee someone's results. It's dependent upon your ability to be able to learn something, your ability to be able to take action, your ability to invest in your in yourself by learning this skill set, right? Nothing is ever guaranteed. But this is something that I see so many people just living their dream life by this one skill set. And so I'm sharing what I learned so that you can f figure out if it's something for you. I personally believe everyone should know this skill set, but you know, it's just my opinion. So thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your day and uh, stay tuned. I'm going to be trying to do more during the week, not just on Sundays. Um, but again, I, I do have a day job as a Python programmer. I do have my digital marketing and social media ads um, agency. And of course, I'm doing Forex. So again, have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your day and I will see you on the next one.